An important element of any large city nowadays, the iconic New York subway has had its ups and downs throughout its gnarly history. Statistics show that after the COVID pandemic a new downturn is imminent. The decline in ridership combined with fare evasion will inevitably reflect in the lack of funding. There are only three elements that always brighten up my mood when I think of New York subway. People, art and views. In the 80s, as New York's transit system underwent a major facelift, the MTA Art and Design Agency emerged. It curated various artworks connecting stations, neighborhoods and riders through diverse creative expressions. The New York subway has its own atmosphere. MTA workers are always trying to organize a crowd, lost tourists figuring out where they made the wrong switch, hard workers just trying to make the one hour commute as swift as possible, local hawkers selling churros and me capturing it all for you to get a feel of what it's like to ride the subway of one of the most famous places on the planet. One can spend hours contemplating the mosaics. A group of people watching a film scene. Isn't it what you're doing right now? Sometimes you run across the subway hall so fast that you don't see quirky things happening. That's life consisting of micro-interactions between people with different backgrounds, motives and aspirations. The subway is what unites us all in the big melting pot named New York City. 
In the unstoppable torrent of dense human flow, tolerance and patience are your life buoy. The Y Mariners of William Wagner are one of my favorites. The Y Mariner dog is a large breed that was originally bred as a pointer hunting dog in the early 19th century. Their primary function is to locate game bird, point to their location and then hold that pointing stance until the hunter can approach and flush the birds into the air for a shot. Wagner used their natural ability to pose for a photo. What a cute thing, but we move forward. Well. Move is a strong word for this subway. There's usually a delay for our next train. Let's wait 10 minutes. Some stations have a simple yet well implemented reference, like this 81st Street station. It's located below the Museum of Natural History and you can immediately get a hint by looking at the mosaics and bar leaves. The girls love it too. I can't judge them. These fossil imitations took my heart, they are genius. New York is a huge city, but it's the city of lonely people. This hidden musical art installation made by Christopher Janney in 1995 has a great meaning as it's meant to connect strangers from the opposite platforms. There's a big deal of symbolism in it. One can understand it only after living in the city for a minute. Do you still remember the three elements that I love about the New York subway? Here's the third one the views. And to see them you need to go to the elevated stations. For instance, you can board the 7th in Queens and any stations past Jackson Heights will be getting more and more exciting. The views of the Manhattan skyline and sunny side are enchanting. The stations per se are rather simplistic, but sometimes they can reveal pleasant details like this stained glass by Yumi Ho. And right before arriving at Queensborough Plaza, you'll have a chance to witness the urban monstrosity in the face of the huge open-air transit hub. It's not necessarily something beautiful or artistic, but it's still a perk for an urban lover. Grand Central Station. Filmmakers love this location. The opulent little details come together and shape this marvelous building as a perfect example of Beaux-Arts architectural style that was popular in the beginning of the 20th century. You've probably seen it in many movies from Carlitos Way to Avengers.
In 1992, the Chicago-based artist Nick Cave found himself deeply affected by the beating of Rodney King, a significant event that shook the nation. While sitting in the park during this turbulent time, he came across a discarded twig on the ground. To him, it symbolized the scene of disposability he often felt as a black man in America. This seemingly insignificant twig served as a catalyst, inspiring him to create a unique form of wearable sculpture, a sort of protective second skin. Using twigs as his primary material, he fashioned what he would later call a sound suit. These creations are not just static work of art, they serve as dynamic instruments for his collaborative performances projects. Through these performances, Cave engages with these vital issues using the sound suits as vehicles for conveying messages and sparking discussions. Welcome to Smith and Ninth Street stations in Brooklyn. Sometimes I miss a few trains there just because I'm too busy contemplating the views. The Statue of Liberty in the distance is always stunning. Fulton Center, situated at the crossroads of Fulton Street and Broadway in Lower Manhattan, is a massive subway and retail hub. It took 1.4 billion to transform the aging Fulton Street subway station. The project involved creating new underground pathways and giving a makeover to existing stations. Look at this outlandish construction. It was built on the site of the tragically destroyed Twin Towers. It was orchestrated by the famous architect and artist Santiago Calatrava. Although a very expensive project that ended up costing more than 4 billion, this construction deservedly became one of my favorite parts of Manhattan. As Santiago Calatrava said himself, it looks not as a memorial to death, but as a memorial to life. It's grandiose, bright, full of light and also very functional due to its also being a huge mall. It's one of the modern New York City civil objects that's going to be associated with the city along with iconic buildings like the Brooklyn Bridge and Grand Central Station. Moving on and we're passing a big art Pandora box. A truly philosophical station for me. This is 14th and 8th. At first, nothing too special, you see whimsical funny figurines reflecting the antics of New York City life. They're hiding at every corner. Nice and funny work. One of them is strange though, a guy shooting a dog. And here's the story behind it. In 1977, at the age of 25, a New York-based artist Tom Otterness adopted a dog from an animal shelter, tied it to a tree and shot it to death. He recorded the whole thing with a movie camera and titled the footage Shot Dog Film. The film played at the Times Square Theatre and on Christmas morning in 1979 it aired on Manhattan Cable TV where hundreds of people watched it. And now you see his late art that made him famous worldwide. It definitely raises some philosophical questions like can we separate art from their creators and should we tolerate violence and brutality as long as it's art? These are all not very easy questions to answer. But in the context of this video I just want to show you how many hidden things there are in the New York City subway. Some are beautiful, some are horrible, some are inspiring, some are outrageous. And I encourage you to go and explore on your own.